Wilhelm C. Röntgen, X-rays. Shadowy pictures from inside the human body, recorded with the help of X-rays. And this is how it looks today. With the help of electronics, modern X-ray technology makes it possible to create a three-dimensional view. This allows a doctor to examine every detail of the human body. It all started in Würzburg on the evening of November the 8th, 1895, the physics department of the university. The head of the department, Professor Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen, was once again working late in his laboratory. With this induction coil, Röntgen created high voltages which were carried to two metal electrodes in an almost completely evacuated tube. The tube began to glow. He'd been examining these fluorescent effects for many years, trying to find an explanation. When he was involved in his experiments, Röntgen quite forgot the time. His investigations often lasted late into the night. In the darkened laboratory, Röntgen noticed that fragments of barium platinocyanide that happened to be lying around also began to glow. He held a screen coated with the same material up to the tube, and then he wrapped the tube in black paper. The radiation passed right through the wrapping. What could that mean? As a physicist, Röntgen recognised that it must be a new, previously unknown form of radiation. A form of radiation that was capable of passing through a door at a distance of two metres. The outline of the door handle was visible on the screen. Apparently, the rays could penetrate wood and metal to different degrees. Röntgen was an amateur photographer, and so it immediately occurred to him to record these phenomena on a photographic plate. In the weeks that followed, Röntgen x-rayed everything he could lay his hands on, for example, his box of weights or a wire coil from his laboratory. Röntgen thoroughly investigated the characteristics of these new rays, but they couldn't be explained given the state of knowledge at this time. Now we know that this radiation is caused by electrons, the tiny particles that form the basis of electric current. High voltages draw them out of the negative electrode. They cause X-rays when they strike the anode. X-rays are similar to light waves, but with a shorter wavelength and greater energy. Both visible light and X-rays belong to the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, just like radio waves, infrared and ultraviolet light, and gamma rays. These different wavelengths are the reason why light and X-rays can penetrate different materials. Light can pass through lead glass, X-rays cannot. Wood, on the other hand, keeps out light but lets X-rays through almost completely. Bone absorbs X-rays more than the surrounding tissue one of the earliest X-ray documents. But back to our story. In the first weeks after making the discovery, Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen worked as hard as he could to investigate the new form of radiation. He sometimes ate and slept in his laboratory and wrote his first publication on the subject entitled On a New Form of Radiation. This appeared seven weeks after the discovery.
he modestly named the new phenomenon X-rays. In January 1896, his colleagues gave it the name Röntgen radiation, by which it's still known in Germany. The news went round the world like wildfire. Just five years later, Röntgen was given the first Nobel Prize for Physics, awarded by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. From then on, Röntgen, the son of a Westphalian cloth merchant, was one of the most famous scientists of his time. But it wasn't only scientists who received the new discovery with enthusiasm. Much was made of it in the press and films, and cartoonists just loved it. A popular song was even written in praise of Röntgen and his discovery. Another curious idea from the 1930s. X-rays reveal the inner workings of music. Röntgen's discovery realised an old dream of medical science, the transparent human being. Just a few weeks after Röntgen's discovery, progressive doctors in New Jersey used X-rays to look inside their patients' bodies. In the early days of X-rays, the patient had to be very patient. He had to sit still for up to 15 minutes. The doctor, too, was exposed to the rays. After a time, scientists and doctors noticed that careless use of x-rays resulted in illnesses and damage to body tissue. The tubes were enclosed and attempts were made to reduce the dosage. Here a cutout is being used to reduce the amount of radiation the patient is exposed to. Machen Sie bitte den Mund auf und halten. Fräulein. On other occasions, patient and doctor are protected from the effects of the rays with lead aprons. In the 1930s and 40s, scientists developed contrast media. These were liquids the patient swallowed or had injected. On the X-ray screen, the doctor could then watch the activity of the digestive organs, for example. Röntgen's discovery had social consequences as well. With the help of mass X-ray examinations, doctors largely succeeded in getting rid of tuberculosis, which a generation earlier had been the most widespread and dangerous disease in Northern Europe. Infection was detected so early that the disease could be prevented from breaking out. Another application that has developed since the beginning of the century is radiation therapy, especially in cases of cancer. Direct controlled irradiation is capable of destroying a tumour. Classical forms of examination have been complemented by new methods, especially scanning. Protected by radiation-resistant lead glass, the doctor and his assistants observe the patient and keep a check on the exposures. The complicated movements of the apparatus are also controlled from the outside. Scanning produces a series of images of separate layers and thus allows the doctor to reconstruct the spatial relationships inside the body. Ganz ruhig halten. Bitte bleiben Sie stehen, bis der Apparat ganz um Sie herum gelaufen ist. a panoramic image of a jaw, and keeping a check on bodily functions during an operation.
In addition, by using a computer to process the scanned picture data, a perspective view can even be created. Not only bones, but also the different layers of body tissue are made clearly visible. But medicine is only one of the many areas in which these useful but dangerous rays are used. Röntgen himself x-rayed solid objects, his shotgun with the cartridges clearly visible in the barrel. A security check at an airport. A small, fan-shaped beam of X-rays scans the interior of the luggage and, with the help of modern electronics, creates an image that can be displayed on the screen. In this way, the security officer can see whether the passenger's luggage contains any dangerous objects. Another form of security. The Customs uses machines that are so large that they can X-ray a 40-foot long container. The check takes less than three minutes. The computer also allows details to be enlarged. X-rays even have a role to play in art. The Church of St. Lawrence in Nuremberg and the famous carving by Veit Stoss, the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to Mary. In 1817, the work fell to the ground and broke into fragments. It was later restored and parts of it had to be replaced. It was only with the help of x-rays that the details of this work became visible. For example, the nails used to fix the new parts in place. When Röntgen made his discovery almost a hundred years ago, he didn't know that space is full of X-rays. The atmosphere protects us from these highly energized rays, which are dangerous to life on Earth. Satellites like the German Rosat are used to investigate this radiation. With their help, numerous X-ray stars have been discovered, including entire X-ray galaxies. Even our Sun emits X-radiation. Thus, Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen's discovery has extended human vision, both outwards and inwards. <laughs>